All right, so to prep our outer fabric here for our embroidery, we are gonna lay the fabric with the pretty side of it facing up. So notice the hem that we created should be facing down, okay? And if you wanna put your embroidery placement the same place that I did, what I did was simply measure, first of all, let's fold this in half just so we can get a, a, a light crease so we know we're gonna be somewhere here in the center. And I'm just kind of scratching the fabric a little bit with my nail. And you see the denim really holds a nice crease. So there's our center mark. And then I measured two inches or two and a half inches down from the top hemmed edge. So we'll do two and a half right here. And make sure that you're using a water soluble pen. I'm just gonna slide over a little bit and make another mark at my two and a half. And then in from the sides, I just measured two inches. So I know where to kind of exactly line up my design. So two inches is here. So just a couple of different reference points on there, and you can kind of eyeball it if you want to as well, or you can take more points uh, so you know how to better line up your design. Now the design that we're gonna be using is out of the book called Stitch Style, and you can see that I have the same design printed on both sides, and that's because this book offers two, what, two different ways for you to use the embroidery design. So on the solid black line that looks like black ink printed on here, you can lay your paper over this and trace the design out, but this is quite intricate and there's a lot of small pieces. I didn't want to do that. So I um, decided to cut into the sheet like it's referenced in the book to do, and the opposite side of that is kind of like a lighter black ink color, it's more like a dark gray color, and that's the transfer side. So let me show you how I do it. We can lay this with the transfer side down onto our fabric, and because the same design is printed on the opposite side, we can use this top part as our guide, okay? So I can even cut this edge off here, so I can better line up my design. So transfer side is this one, transfer side is gonna go down, I want the top of the design about here to be where these measurements are, okay? And then you can see that about two inches in from the sides is the end and the beginning of my design going this way. So just line it up as best as you can get it. And it's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect as far as like exactly the same measurements as I'm using here. Just line it up so that you get it straight. And I'm gonna scoot this up just a little bit. I'm covering my marks here, but I can still see kind of where I'm at. You can always go back and measure two inches to the edge of the design, two inches, and that way I'll ensure that my design is going to be centered. So from where this circle starts, I need to scoot this over just a little bit. And that's better. Let's go ahead and press this with a warm iron. You can use some fabric on top of this. Um, I'm just gonna lay the lining over it just to protect the ink on that side. And just with a warm iron, try not to move that paper underneath. I'm just kind of gliding it across so that the heat transfers that ink over to my fabric. Now carefully remove whatever pressing cloth you're using. I'm holding the paper in place. And I'm gonna flip over one side of it and it didn't transfer. So let me do it again, just straight. All right. So here we have our design. And I've already used it once before. So let's peel this back and you can see that my design has shown up nicely there because I'm working on a light fabric. If the fabric was a little bit darker than this, I might not be able to see it, but now you know that you can get more than one use out of the transfer side sheets uh, from this Indigo Junction Stitch Style book, okay? So it's, we can put that aside, and you can always save it because remember, the opposite side is black, so you can always trace it. So if you wanna save this design for future use, go ahead and save it somewhere so that you can use it in the future. So now we have our design right onto our fabric exactly where we want it and we're ready to start doing some embroidery stitches. All right, so now that we have our embroidery design transferred to our outer fabric, the next step is to load it into a hoop and to start embroidering. So I don't have another hoop this size, but I will tell you that for the size project that we're working on, I used a nine inch wooden hoop here and it worked out perfectly. I have enough of the overhang still here for the top part. If you find that you have a smaller hoop and you're not able to get the entire design into it, feel free to hoop it in one section, do part of it, and then go ahead and do the other. But I kind of like to just have the whole thing in one. So a nine 
nine inch uh, wooden hoop works fine for this project. All right, so here's one sample that I have almost completed for you because I just wanted to show you what types of stitches we did here. Super easy. First, let's go over, and I'll use my little scissors here to point. Let's talk about the center design here. This little motif was done, it's outlined, right? And I did it just using our back stitch. And if you recall from our previous hand embroidery videos, the back stitch is this one, where you come up, take a stitch, and then you're kind of making the next stitch going back to where you previously came out of, okay? So if you need a refresher on that, make sure that you click right here, and that graphic will take you right to that video tutorial. So that's just the back stitch. Now most of this is done with the same back stitch, so let's go over it. This one is done with the back stitch, the center circle was done with the back stitch. And for those of you that are a little hesitant to try things like circles and curves, remember what I said back in that other video. If you are doing a back stitch around any curves or any points like this or like a full circle, the trick is to just make smaller stitches. If you do a long stitch, it's going to be pretty straight. But if you break up those curves into smaller bits, it's kind of like when we're sewing around curves, right? We don't just sew and swing it through. The, if you work on smaller bits, smaller bits, a little at a time, then you're able to get it a lot better, okay? So the same works for, the, for your hand embroidery stitches. Now let's look at these different little circles here with the flowers inside of them. This circle here, the blue that you see, again, back stitch. The one here was done with our back stitch and the yellow flower that's on the inside as well. And then the center point here and these little bubbles that we have going around the edge are just French knots. And remember that the French knot is you wrap it three times around the needle. Again, if you need a refresher on that, I have a full video tutorial on French knots and you can click right here and that graphic will take you to that video, okay? So French knot in the center, French knots all the way around. The same exact thing we did here on this other side. So now all we have left are these little leaves. And this is where I wanna show you something a little different. So these two, they may look the same to you on camera, but in person, I can tell that this one looks a little bit better to me just because it's more pronounced as far as the outline goes. And so this uses, first of all, a back stitch going down the stem here. But to fill in the leaves completely, instead of just having an outline, I went ahead and did a satin stitch. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a little bit. But I wanted to show you two different ways. If you just go in and do a line up the stem, like right, you see the little straight line here that's just the stem part of it. If you just do the back stitches there and then you just start to fill in the actual little leaf part, you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. So depending on how precise you are entering and exiting every single stitch, you may or may not get really pronounced leaves, right? Like the shape, that kind of teardrop shape that we're looking for. On this one, however, we get a more pronounced shape. And that is because I outlined the entire motif first in back stitches and then went back with my satin stitches and filled them in. So it gives me kind of like a buffer edge and then you can come in and fill them in with a satin stitch inside of it. So it's a little bit easier and again, it gives you a more pronounced edge. Now another difference is this is a lot more filled up. It's a lot more textured and it's more raised. And that's because I use four strands of embroidery floss on this one. And on this one, I just use two. So although we have a more defined look on this one because of the outlining that I did initially, it lays a little bit flatter as well. So play around with the different strands that you're using, how many of them you're using, and then the different techniques that you can do as well. So we're gonna jump over here and I'm gonna do the same thing uh, on one of these on this side and show you how I do it. So the first thing I need is to grab my embroidery floss and I'm using this really pretty green color. I've already cut out a piece. Remember that the embroidery floss comes six strands, all right? So if you grab it on one end and you kind of tap it and flick it back and forth, you can see them start to separate. So I'm gonna repeat what I've done initially on this bottom one here that I kind of like better than that one, and I'm gonna use just two strands. So to separate this, if you cut off a really long piece, it's gonna get tangled on you. So what you wanna do is cut out a piece that measures uh, no more than about 18, 20 inches or so, and then I'm holding it at the top, I'm gonna want two strands, okay? So here's what I do. There's four in one hand, right? And the two that I want in the other. Now I'm holding it right here, separate on one hand. And with my opposite hand, I'm going to just hold it here and run my pointer finger down the center. And it's gonna curl on you, so kind of just uncurl it with your hand and do another chunk. So you see how it's all twisted up on me right here? I'm going to untwist it a little bit to get it to flow a little easier. All right, so we're coming down to the end here and I'm just gonna finish separating them out. Perfect. So I have two strands and four strands and I can save this 
for the rest of them because I still have two more batches of two strands, right? So for these two, we're going to use them and thread them through our embroidery needle. All right, so I have my embroidery needle and it's threaded. I put a knot on the end of my floss here as well. And I'm just going to start my back stitches and outline the entire little design here. And you can do the leaves first, you can do the whole stem part first, you can definitely just jump around. So I'm going to come in a little bit, take one stitch, and then on that more round part going up towards the point or the tip of that leaf, I'm going to take, break that up into two more stitches. So there's one. And now I can go up to the peak and get a really pronounced little tip there as I come down. All right, and then I'm going to come down on the opposite side of it. And go right back in right at the peak so I can get that pronounced little tip that I want. And that looks good to me. So as I'm coming across to do the last little leaf here, I am going to share something with you. Notice the design looks super cute already just with the outline stitches. So if you don't want to go and venture off into the world of satin stitches, which I'm going to show you next, if you just want to keep it real simple with just the basic stitches that you've already learned in this series, just leave it like this, just like you're seeing it right here. It still looks super cute if you just left it as an outline. And so that's another thing to note when you're finding designs out there that you like and want to try out. You don't have to do exactly what the designer or whoever the instructor is requires you to do. You can always make things your own. That's the beauty of handmade stuff, right? We can do whatever we want with it because we're the ones making it. Right, and the last little stitch here. And now, this is kind of like a coloring book. When we were kids, that we outline the stuff and then shade it in on the inside. That's how I used to do it, so that that outline kind of gives you like that buffer edge, right? So now when you start going in side to side, you are a lot uh, less likely to go outside of the lines, right? Because you see where the darker line is to stop you. So that's the same idea with this little outline here. So now we'll go in and just fill in the leaves part of it with a satin stitch. And so the satin stitch, if you're not familiar with it, is just a stitch that basically fills in empty space like this. If you're familiar with machine embroidery, oftentimes that's pretty much what makes up a lot of those designs that are not just outline stitches. It's the ones where it's just like, it fills in. It's a lot of thread gets taken up, you know? but it's just going to fill in the leaf. So I'm going to start on one end and you can start in the middle if you want to. If you notice that your stitches aren't being like exactly even side to side, you can start in the middle and I'll show you that in the next thing. But I'm just going to take a super teensy little stitch right in the corner. Now I'm going to come over a little bit higher and keep in mind if you're using just two strands of floss like I am, the two strands are not going to cover that much space, so you really got to keep your stitches close. So I'm coming up here, and then I'm reaching in across on the other edge of the leaf to fill in that piece. Again, I'm starting off on one end, right here, and then I'm going to come in on the opposite end, or across it from it, so that I start filling in that empty space there in the middle. here and jump all the way across here 
and you can see that those stitches are starting to get filled in. And so this is going to take a little longer and we're just working on really tiny leaves here. If you're going to do a satin stitch to fill in a big space, it's definitely going to take up a lot of thread and it'll take you a while. But this is a good way to introduce you to um, a new stitch. So really for this design, all you need to know how to do is the back stitch, your French knot, and a satin stitch if you wanted to do these, uh, fill the leaves in like I'm doing here. Two more stitches. One and then a really teensy one right on the end. All right. So now you get the idea. First outline them and then fill them in with the satin stitch. And then I'm going to go through and finish these off so we can move on to the next step in our project, which is putting the tote bag together. Once you're done with the entire embroidery design, that's it. You're ready to put them together and finish off your tote. So as you can see, I went ahead and completed all the little leaf ones here, and I filled them in with the satin stitch, but then I decided to just leave these as the outline. So play around with whatever designs and the stitches that you want to use. Now that I'm looking at this actually, I think this blue circle here would look great if I filled it in with a satin stitch, but for now I'm just going to leave it like this. So remember, just using back stitches, French knots, and some satin stitches, you can complete this entire design. Now let's talk a little bit about color, just to show you briefly the colors of the embroidery floss that I decided to use. I always like to use thread or floss that creates a contrast between the background fabric and the design itself. I really wanted to use some white on here, but white, it was just too close to this pistachio color of the denim that I used, so I decided to just go nice and bold with this pink, kind of like a darker goldish color, a nice blue and this darker green color for the leaves. So play around with your colors and you can use as many as I did. You can do it in one color or you can even use more than this. So now that we're ready to unhoop our project from here, we can now move on to the next step which is to complete our tote bag. 